Although slavery is commonly thought to be a thing of the past in the U.S., human traffickers generate hundreds of billions of dollars yearly in profits through sexual exploitation or forced labor of victims. It can be relatives trafficking their uh, daughters or nieces or, or sons um, out of apartments. You know, um, so it can be really be anywhere. Patty Moita is the director of adolescent programs for Preventing Child Abuse New Jersey. The organization partnered with My Life, My Choice, a Boston nonprofit that trains adults on how to prevent sex trafficking and young women from entering that world. So we started training the folks that work in the group homes and the shelters and the schools to, that, that work every day with adolescents. What's really rich about the curriculum, it's, it's survivor-led. So we have survivors who train with us. We have survivors who implement the program and talk with our girls. Survivors come to session and talk about their experience. The curriculum was created in 2003 by a survivor of exploitation. It includes 10 sessions and focuses on prevention. So the sessions cover uh, everything from what puts you at risk, to recruitment tactics that pimps and traffickers will use. The nonprofit's curriculum is based off an evaluation with the purpose of assessing the effectiveness of the organization's 10-week training. The study evaluated 354 at-risk youth across Massachusetts, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Florida over three years. Participants were surveyed at the start of the prevention group, at the end, and then six months after. Of the total youth evaluated, 96% were female, 28% were black, and 40% lived in a residential facility. About a third of them know somebody in their social circle who's already experienced some level of exploitation. And then a higher percentage, around 40%, have been approached at some point. The evaluation found that commercial sexual exploitation decreased by 55% immediately after participants completed the curriculum and by 40% six months after. Moita says while there are consequences for traffickers, she believes the law needs to be changed to provide harsher consequences for buyers. So we want our girls to know if they do reach out to law enforcement and something has happened to them, that the response they'll get is one of um, offering help and support. That they're not going to sit in jail, that they're not going to be humiliated or punished, that they're going to find meet somebody who is nice to them, who respects them, who helps them, who cares about their safety, who cares about their protection. I have a, a soap here, and this became the weapon in the hotels during the Super Bowl. It actually says, are you being forced to do anything you do not want to do? Have you been threatened? This is the National Human Trafficking Hotline, 1-888-373-888. Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle has been an advocate for victims of human trafficking and recently sponsored legislation to thwart human trafficking at massage and body work businesses. We need to look at these establishments make sure they are inspected and that they are, are running legitimate businesses. Huddle says part of the problem is that the description of pimps has changed. She used wealthy financer Jeffrey Epstein's recent arrest as an example. Epstein is a pimp, which certainly doesn't fit the protocol. Um, the owner of the massage parlor is a pimp, which again does not, you know, well-dressed businessman. Again, it is an industry and a business so these pimps are business people. Huddle says legislation she co-sponsored to raise public awareness is currently sitting on the governor's desk. Moita says the two-day training costs $700 a person and will be held on August 13th and 14th at the organization's office in New Brunswick. In New Brunswick, Raven Santana, NJTV News.